In this mini tutorial, we're going to think about interpreting a transverse section through the brain. So how do we approach, how do we look at a transverse section through the brain? And I'm going to be focusing on one particular level, which has got pretty much all of the structures of interest present. So let's remind ourselves what we mean by a transverse section through the brain. So here's a very quick diagrammatic representation of the brain. <laughs> And our transverse section is um, in this plane here, and that's the image to the left. So that's our transverse section um, to the left. But to help us to understand what's going on, um, I've also included a coronal section, which is in this orientation in the image which we can see to the top right. Finally, I've also included an image of what the ventricular system would look like if we were to create a kind of cast of its internal structure. So this is what would happen maybe if you poured plaster of Paris into the ventricular system, enabling you to see the different ventricles. So we're going to use all three of these images to build up a picture of how we might interpret this transverse section. And what we're going to do is we're going to work our way from outside in. So we're going to start off superficially looking at the cerebral cortex and work our way all the way in until we get to the midline, okay? Taking in all the different structures as we encounter them. So the first thing to note is, um, of course, the very clearly defined um, cerebral cortex, the grey matter of the cortex, which we can see here, going all the way around the brain in this transverse section. Um, you can also see it on the image of the coronal section as well. So, so this cortex is, is easy to identify as the superficial most um, layer in the brain. Uh, we can see um, part of the frontal lobe here, and we can see part of the occipital lobe here. Um, and also we, we've got a bit of the uh, temporal lobe visible here. Okay. Same thing on our coronal section. Here we've got um, the temporal lobe visible here. Um, probably part of the frontal or parietal lobes there. Now, as we move our way from lateral to medial, you'll note that we find a, a new hidden piece of cortex here, which is hidden away from the surface of the brain. And this particular piece of cortex um, is known as the insula, okay, I-N-S-U-L-A, the insula, um, and it gets its name because it is insular. It keeps itself to itself and it doesn't like to um, really interact with the outside world, if you get what I mean. So the insular is this piece of hidden cortex here, very clearly visible on our transverse section. Where is it on the coronal section? Well, there it is. There's the insular on our coronal section. So by finding the insular on the coronal section, we can immediately establish that the level of our transverse section is at a, through this line here. So our transverse section is at approximately this level, going through the centre of the insula. So we can see the insula uh, here. It's got grey matter, so it's a cortical structure. Uh, and just deep to this grey matter is a little bit of white matter. You don't need to know anything really about this area of white matter sitting deep to the insular cortex. However, what you do need to be familiar with um, are these grey matter structures here sitting deep to the insula. So we can see a set of grey matter structures here sitting deep to the insula in the transverse section. And we can see those same grey matter structures here sitting deep to the insula on our coronal section. Now, the superficial part of this so-called lentiform nucleus, okay, this triangular-shaped nucleus here, the superficial most part of it at this point and at this point here is known as the putamen, okay? So the superficial most part um, of this grey matter structure that we've just described is known as the putamen. So let's put a label on that, the putamen. So there's the putamen there, okay? And the putamen is part of the basal ganglia, so it's important in the control of movement. Now, sitting just deep to the putamen and not very obviously differentiable 
in this image is another region here and that's the globus pallidus okay and we can see the globus pallidus on the coronal section very easily and mainly because this is a diagrammatic representation however in the real brain the globus pallidus is, is harder to see um, but it's there and if we could look at it at a higher mag we might just be able to differentiate it okay so sitting just deep to the putamen approximately at this point here is the globus pallidus and that once again is a part of the deep grey matter and it's one of the basal ganglia. Now a third and final part of the basal ganglia we need to recognise um, is this area of grey matter here. Okay, we see it on both sides very clearly sitting just next to the lateral ventricle um, and this bit of grey matter here is another part of the um, basal ganglia and that's called the chordate nucleus okay so this is the chordate nucleus and we can see the chordate as well if we look at the coronal section there it is okay and actually the chordate is quite interesting because it's not just a single isolated blob of grey matter um, sitting next to the lateral ventricles. Actually, if I can refer your attention to the um, ventricular system cast, the chordate nucleus actually follows the curve of the lateral ventricle. Okay, It's a C-shaped structure. So frequently, um, in sections through the brain, you'll frequently see the chordate appearing twice. Okay, And once roughly here, and it also appears again towards the back, okay? And that's because it's a C-shaped structure. So you can imagine, um, if, if I just quickly draw on what the chordate might look like, okay? So if it follows the ventricles like that, if you were to draw a line, a transverse section, say, through the brain, you'd cut through the chordate twice. So because it's C-shaped, frequently we see the chordate appearing twice in our brain sections. Now let's finish off the grey matter structures and just consider the final important grey matter structure which we can see here, this large bulge here and here. Okay, These are the two halves of the thalamus. Okay, So these are, the, I'll just change the colour back to black actually, these are the two halves of the thalamus and as you'll know as you should know from the somatosensory system the thalamus is an important relay center in the sensory system relaying impulses up to the sensory cortex um, and the thalamus it's quite large it's got two halves one on the left and one on the right um, and the bulk of the thalami actually squashes the third ventricle in between them down to just a flat disc shaped structure. So here is the third ventricle if you look at the ventricular system diagram and it's squashed flat because it's got one half of the thalamus either side of it. Once again we can see in the coronal section there's one thalamus, there's the other and there in the midline is that flattened thin third ventricle squashed between the two thalami. Now those are the grey matter structures finished so let's um, move on to the white matter structures now the two major white matter structures I want to show to you are firstly the internal capsule which you can see here this v-shaped structure and secondly elements of the corpus callosum Okay, so these callosal fibres connecting the left and right hemispheres. Uh, so let's do the callosal fibres first because they're relatively straightforward. So we can see on the transverse section elements of the corpus callosum here connecting left and right hemispheres. And, and that's very, very clear to see. You can even see the trajectory of the fibres, say, connecting one half of the occipital lobe to the other on that transverse section. If we look at the coronal section, once again, we can see the corpus callosum very clearly there, okay? If we try to relate the 
corpus callosum in the coronal section to the ventricular system image, bottom right. You can see that the corpus callosum runs above the lateral ventricles. So you've got to imagine, here are the two lateral ventricles here, and those corpus callosum fibres, those callosal fibres running over the lateral ventricles, so kind of coming out of the page and going into the page, connecting each hemisphere together. But that's all we're going to say about the corpus callosum with respect to the transverse section of the brain. The major structure that we are interested in for the rest of this talk is the internal capsule, which I'm going to highlight on the left side of our brain image in red. So the internal capsule runs in approximately that region there, as seen in the transverse section. Now you're going to do a lot more on the internal capsule in later parts of the unit. Um, but basically, uh, the internal capsule connects the cerebral cortex with the rest of the nervous system. Okay, So it's a major white matter pathway. And if we want to find it on the coronal section, we, we can see here is the cerebral cortex. If the cerebral cortex wants to talk to the rest of the nervous system, it has to send axons down here and through this internal capsule at this point. Okay, And the internal capsule is relatively easy to find, whether that be on a transverse section or a coronal section, because it is sandwiched in between two major parts of grey matter. It's sandwiched in between the thalamus, medially, and the lentiform nucleus, laterally. Okay? So there's the lentiform nucleus, laterally. There's the thalamus, medially. And the internal capsule is sandwiched in between those two structures. We can see that, once again, when we look at the coronal section. So here's the internal capsule, here. Okay, here is the thalamus, and here is the lentiform nucleus, okay, and there is the internal capsule sandwiched in between those two structures. So if ever you're looking for the internal capsule on a section through the brain, look for the white matter sandwiched between the lentiform nucleus, the triangular nucleus there, and the thalamus. So that's the internal capsule. Um, the last thing I want to mention to you is the appearance of the ventricular system in our transverse section through the brain. And you can see quite clearly on the transverse section, here's a cavity, and of course here's a cavity. Okay, And these are elements of the lateral ventricles. And then there's a midline slit sandwiched between the two halves of the thalamus, that is the third ventricle. Okay, Now, the reason that the lateral ventricles are appearing twice on each side in our transverse section follows the same logic as for why the chordate nucleus appears twice in transverse sections of the brain as well. Because the lateral ventricles are C-shaped and therefore in a transverse section through the brain, as we've shown here in the red line, the lateral ventricle will be cut twice due to its C-shaped morphology. So it's cut there at the front and there at the back. What do the lateral ventricles look like on the coronal section? Well, the lateral ventricle, there's one here and there's one there. And actually the lateral ventricles along with the third ventricle in the midline form a T-shaped structure. Okay, So on a coronal section through the brain, the ventricular system is quite um, distinctive in having a T-shaped um, morphology. So those are the major features that I want you to be aware of when you're looking at a transverse section through the brain. Okay, thank you.